Hey there everybody, thanks for joining me for another one man review. Today I'll be taking a look at Jillian and Mariko Tamaki's Roaming from Drawn and Quarterly. This is a book I've been waiting for since before I knew it. they were making another book, since before it was announced, since before it had a title, any of that. Uh, as soon as I finished reading this one, Summer, I was immediately like, what is this team going to do next? Or at least what is this artist going to do next? Because um, Jillian Tamaki just absolutely floored me with that book. And this follow-up is no disappointment at all. This is also an amazing book. A different art style, but completely fitting for the book and re retaining everything that was so good about the art in this one summer. Um, so before I even get into what this book is, I would say uh, run out and buy it. I'm going to try and do a fairly spoilerly free review since it's new out, and I do think everyone should buy it. Uh, it does have a dust cover, which I always find a bit obnoxious, but it's going to be pretty hard to just chuck this one because it has this really amazing like poster on the inside. The other thing is, given how amazing the art is in the book, I think the cover's pretty lackluster. It's my only complaint about the book. It definitely introduces us to all of the main characters. You have Zoe, Danny, and Fiona. But uh, just even looking at like this spread on the inside here and the composition of this and stuff, it's you could see that this is just a more striking image. So I feel, yeah, like the cover undersells the book a little bit. It doesn't give the real sense of like splendor of location that's in the book. I don't know um, who designed it. It looks, you know, like it's all hand done. So I'm assuming Jillian Tamaki, but again given her art throughout the book i think you know her design sense is quite quite a bit better than that i mean even this would be a better cover so that's my only complaint about the book uh other than that it's really awesome i'm gonna flip through the opening sequence here just so you can get a sense of like uh jillian's storytelling and the way she's using the spot colors in the book there's like the, this kind of grayish bluish color and then this orange uh, and then there's the white and the black that are used. And they're all used really, really effectively. So the story here is you have um, Zoe and Danny are old friends. They've gone to different colleges. And they're going to meet up in New York for a vacation. And Danny has brought her, her new friend from school, Fiona, along for the ride. And most of it's just them being tourists. But there's like how... Uh, having this third character along impacts their relationship. So it starts out with uh, Zoe here basically listening to, you see it starts out with just dialogue, and she's in the airport. I just really think this sequence is very, very well written and well drawn, well told from a storytelling standpoint, where this gal's on the phone and she's arguing with someone very loud, disruptive, and then uh, at the, here, this is where I think the writing's great. She's like, if you tell a single soul what I'm about to tell you, I will kill you dead. And it's just like, bitch, you're telling the whole airport, every everything about it. And so Zoe here is like, God, I got to get away from this lady. She goes somewhere else. And this guy sits down to try and pick up on her. So she has to go somewhere else. And just this kind of like hassle of being in public with people who just have no idea that they're in public or no manners. Um, I think that's great. Everything in this book, Sean uses the, the now I use it too because of him, the, the term well observed. I think everything about this book is so well observed, both in the writing and in the art. It very much captures my experience of going to New York and just getting inundated in it and then overwhelmed and wanting to leave. I have about a four-day tolerance for New York, and this book happens over four or five days. It's split into days. And so, I don't know, it just really matches my New York experience, and every little detail is perfect. But then here you get this, like, waiting for the person coming down, and the friends seeing each other, and the excitement of the reu reuniting and all of that. And then you get introduced to Fiona, and right away you get the sense that um, Fiona is just kind of a bitch. She's very self-absorbed, very disinterested, very much on her phone a lot, kind of talking trash about both of the friends. And you, you know immediately it's no, it's no spoiler, I would say. We're on page 19 of a 
300 plus page book, 400 page book, that she's going to be kind of the disruption that drives the story forward, how she disrupts the, the friendship. But here you can see how this black with two color palette is, is working. And Jillian Tamaki can really um, switch that up to get different vibes. One thing that I really do like is that as the book moves through from night to day, there's like these color coding. Uh, this will kind of go on the pages if it's turning into the evening and then the pages will get black if it's night. You'll see that the like grayish bluish color here takes over uh, when you get into the night. It's it's much more present in the pages. And then I'll, fl I'll flip back. Uh, no, we'll go, let's see, there in Times Square. I don't know where the Times Square page is, but here you get a smaller view of Times Square and it just feels so accurate. Even though it's not super detail dense, you know, it's not like every window's rendered and everything. It's like every key bit of information you know, need to know to know exactly where you are at. You know, if you've been to New York, if you live in New York, you could probably reconstruct an exact map of where they're walk walking just by the signs. This feels like Jillian Tamaki must have gone and just, uh, actually taking a trip and photographed everything or is using Google Street View or something. I mean, each one of these is so spot on accurate. Uh, also, this is what I w really was compelled by when I, in her artwork, when I first read this one summer, is that even though she's drawing in a cartoony style, there's so much naturalism and just authenticity in the way that she poses people, like every little bit of like finger, you know, it just, it feels like it has to be photo reference, but it's also like, there's no way you could get someone to pose so naturally, I don't think. Uh, so it's just really, I don't know. I don't know if she is doing photo referencing, but like just the way that people sit on the bikes and the little flick of the cigarette, um, she's either just a, a amazing cartoonist in terms of gesture or there's some kind of photo reference behind it or some mixture of the two. I don't know, but that has always just astonished me about her work is I don't think there's one drawing where it doesn't feel like a real person moving on the page. And it, it's just really, really astonishing stuff that carries over to the way that she builds out New York, as well as that the people in New York, you know, you con constantly got the bike riders and there's just different types. Like this drawing here killed me. They're, they're going into a Starbucks. And then like, I swear to God, I've seen this lady in New York, like the old, um, like skinny, wealthy, but then she's got the torn up pants here and she's walking her little dog. Uh, she's probably lived in New York forever or moved there a long time ago to try and be famous. Like, I don't know. It's just like, it, it's just a person that I've seen before w while I'm in New York. Uh, there's also like here, they're going into the, this is, this has got to be the Met. Um, they're going into these places and you get these spreads like this. This is actually a four page spread. If you look at it, this is an image that, sh that could fold out over four pages. You just get all of these amazing details of the city and the different buildings they're going into and they just get combined together in these big like montage collage things and it really gives you a sense of how um, yeah detail rich New York is and how overwhelming I mean the first time I went to New York I was on the verge of a panic attack for most of the time because it was just so overwhelming with sights and sounds and smells and noises and I think these pages really, really capture that. Like there's just so much to see even in one of the buildings and then you're going to all of these buildings, you really get a sense of why people consider it, you know, one of the centers of culture in the world is it's just got so much going on overwhelmingly. So um, one thing realizing that this is a big spread, when I first looked at this, I thought, man, this is really strange. This, this, I don't know why this is white here. It felt like this area just forgot to get filled in. That was like one thing in the book I thought was weird. But I do think when I see it like against this, like white, realizing that this was a white circle here and thinking that she was working on this as a spread, that white makes a little bit more sense. So it, it took me coming back to this to realize I was looking at a spread and then just looking at, you know, they, they've got the art and stuff here is really, really nice. Uh, here you get another one now they're at the natural 
history museum i believe is what this is and you get another one of those looks of these just crazy like almost collage compositions um, it was tempting to tag all of these, but I mean, there's so many of these in the book. I feel like I can show a couple without like spoiling all the big moments in the book. It's just full of these beautiful illustrations like this. And it's it's things like this that I feel like, you know, where the, the cover kind of undersold what, what is in the book in terms of that just detailed, dense span of what New York is. Um, I think it could have sold the New Yorkiness of the book a, a little bit more on the cover because there's a lot of great stuff. Uh, here you get a sense of Fiona's character. I don't want to read a lot, but uh, they're talking about, um, you know, do, what about kids and would you have kids and stuff like that? Uh, and she says, I would never subject another human being to life. So even though she's pretending she's this big, fancy, flashy character, uh, she has a quite a bit of existential angst in her, which I understand. Uh, I, I kind of feel the same way about having children. Um, I think it's a funny thing to have a debate about the, uh, like, abortion and the value of life without not also having a debate about, like, the moral and ethical complications of committing someone to 70, 80, 90 years of life without their permission and uh, I think that's pr pretty well summed up there as a viewpoint. And then just another one of these amazing, a bunch of amazing spreads throughout the book. Um, this one is in Central Park, and you see that the black is dropped out, and it really gives a sense of light and beauty throughout the whole thing. Uh, it's just kind of really illuminated and glowing, and then also just the beauty of all the interconnecting shapes of the trees and, and all of that. I mean, there is not a single image in this book that's not this beautiful and this well executed. So that that's about as much as I want to say about it. It's three girls running around New York, one of them kind of disrupting the relationship between the other two, and then just an excuse to really dive into and celebrate the vibe of New York, the visual vibe, the way people talk, like just all the characters in the background. It really feels like, you know, I would say if you've never been to New York, pick up this book and this is about as close as you could get um, without actually going there to cap capturing the vibe of being a tourist in New York. Uh, Jillian and Mariko, can see, I mean, they've done two major projects together. They had one earlier one called Skim, which is really nice as well. But pretty much anything they do together is stellar. Anything Jillian Tamaki illustrates is stellar. And I hope it's not such a long gap between roaming and their next project together, or at least the next big Jillian Tamaki project. Um, I will always, always, always buy that and always, always say everyone else should. So, yeah, get out there and get yourself a copy. The Exile by Eric Creek is a gorgeously illustrated Viking saga of revenge. Eric Creek calls it his Viking Western. It's about a, a guy who's been away on the, the war path and is returning home um, to uh, some family troubles that have to be resolved. And this is told in just this amazing, like, kind of three-color art style that looks like old woodblock cuts or something. It's absolutely gorgeous book that you've got to pick up. Make sure to like, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell.